Hello, how are you doing? Welcome back to some more Grand Prix World and another part of our Sauber Let's Play. Today we have the finale of the 2004 season. Uh, really, really looking forward to seeing how we get on. Uh, we have got both championships on the line. Uh, also, Team Survival is on the line. Uh, if we pay out all of the championship bonuses at the end of the year, it could be the end. Um, I really don't know. I, it, it's going to be fun. It's going to be tight. Um, but hey, that's what makes this game fun. And uh, if today, if this season and this series ends today, then it has been an absolute roller coaster of a journey that I have thoroughly enjoyed. But um, and it would be the the greatest way to go out as well if we were to win both championships. So. Yeah, um, a lot to get through today, so let's uh, start off by having a look at the news from the last episode. So Mika Hakkinen uh, ended his streak of retirement by winning the last Grand Prix. Uh, Rubens Barrichello finished second, uh, improved from eighth on the grid. Uh, all very, very good stuff there. The fastest lap was by uh, Mika Hakkinen in the end. Uh, if we have a little look at this... Another big loss, but we have got two of our four cars ready for next season, which is good. Um, we might not even get a fourth car uh, until race one of, of next year. Uh, we have got a TV advantage to use. We've got a race advantage as well. We've got a fixed deal with uh, FedEx. Patronus are uh, close to that, and we have a... Uh, a great deal with HSBC so we might be able to get a fixed deal with them as well uh, and confirm that the license and deal for the fan club has gone through awesome we have got a license and deal ready for clothing um, and the progress on cars has been poor boo okay fair enough right uh, let's go straight to the commercial land of opportunity and see what we can see um, we have got a, a guarantee with FedEx now so no need to particularly worry about that um, we are going to use our TV advantage on them and our success card on them I think every other deal is, is sewn up now it's just those two that we're waiting on yeah again why aren't we getting any money for the clothing is this some sort of glitch I don't know. Ah, cash offers, 165,000. So we will get some money for that this time. Okay, so we are going to make a little bit of money, which is good. Right, I'm going to stick 25% on that. We still have 25% available, so why don't we go... Something like that. And just try and, and get things going with all of those. That should be fine. Okay, um, straight to our development center. We can increase the reliability of that. That's fine. And we'll do the same for the suspension. And then we've got at least four star performance and reliability in everything, which is perfect. Uh, we are going to have our upgrade package ready when when we got so we got round 12 round 13 uh, ready for the start of round 14 and that'll be our final upgrade of the season which should take us up into the 80s of handling um which is going to be absolutely awesome to see uh fairly cheap test here which is good got our research points already so we'll pass those on and now we can get this sorted out so the cars can be fixed up um, I am considering whether to buy any spare parts we're, we're actually below a million for the first time in a long long time now which is the, the big worry of course um, how much are the spare cars oh very very expensive we're not going to do that We've at least got enough to, to be on the grid next year. Um, which is fine. It, it's going to be tight. It is going to be really, really tight come the end of the season. Um, 
yeah, overtaken, I think we do want a decent amount of. Um, and we'll go grip as well. So grip and overtaken for both drivers. And they've got their orders. That's fine. Okay, into the Hungarian Grand Prix then. And let's see. How we get on? So, three and four in the Grand Prix. Okay. Numbers three and four, that is. Um, hopefully qualifying higher than that. Ooh, it's a pole position. Nice. Mika Hakkinen gets our first pole position of the season uh, just ahead of Tuero, Panis and Barrichello. It's ridiculously close between uh, us four. And, you know, if Tuero was a, was a better race driver, this would be a titanic battle for the championship between four drivers. Um, yeah, it has been amazing. We are cl comfortably ahead of Williams and Arrows now. Um, Benetton, 9 and 10. Monteromini actually out-qualifying Damon Hill. His motivation must be going through the floor, which is going to be crazy. But, um, yeah, here we go. Um, let's see how we get on. We don't actually want a two-stop strategy. Let's not make any more idiotic decisions this season. Um, Barrichello's actually going to come in first to try and help in his battle with Hannes. And then Hakkinen's, I, I presume, going to control the race from the front and therefore uh, it doesn't really matter when he comes in. There you go. Brush boots all round. Let's see how we get on in the Grand Prix. There is a podium in there. And it is a race victory. And it's Rubens Barrichello, Mika Hakkinen once again. Reliability is absolutely dogging his season, although it was an accident. Oh, that could cost him. That could cost him terribly. Tuero and Panis uh, round out the podium. That's a good day for Ferrari and the constructors. Irvine finishes fourth, uh, Michael Schumacher fifth, and Damon Hill finally gets his first point of the season. Unbelievable that he's had to wait until round 12 of the season to sort that out. Uh, but Barrichello wins uh, 70, or oh, 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 is, is now 17 points ahead of Panis. Uh, it's looking very, very good for uh, the driver's title for him. Uh, Hakkinen in third at the moment, and uh, there you go. We are 18 points ahead still in the constructors. Absolutely unbelievable stuff. Um, Hakkinen finished the race early. Fastest lap was Panis. It just shows we, we are so, so close with them and if we didn't have the the standard of drivers that we did i don't think we'd be winning this championship i don't think we've actually got the best car and we've got the best drivers we did make a small profit at the last grand prix that's really important that is really important um and let's have a little look then uh, we have got internal technology upgrades ready we are the best manager as well uh Great deal in place with Patronus. Hopefully we can get fixed deal and uh, we have got fixed deal with HSBC. Um, we have got the licensing for clothing. Publishing has been poor. Video games has been poor. Chronometers has been poor. The cars has been poor. Um, oh, goodness sake. They moan when I don't have anybody on it and then they moan when we do. Um, but that's fine. Let's head to the commercial land of opportunity, see what we can pick up. HSBC all sorted out now for the next season. Uh, Patronus, hopefully we can get that sorted out for the next Grand Prix. Um, yeah, and then we, we can actually stop our VIP stuff. I mean, there's no demand for any of this, is there? Well, we might as well keep trying. 
we might as well keep trying and, and see what we can get but yeah okay um nice so uh let's have a look at our upgrades we are gonna have an upgrade ready for the next grand prix which will be italy and as i say that'll be our final upgrade of the season price of cars is is decent to be fair um we might buy a third car for next season and then leave it at that buy the fourth car at the start of next season if we if we can afford it um right we might as well go full beans on the performance now as i say i don't think um oh no they have they have upgraded that Um. Okay, so suspension and brakes. Well, we are working on the brakes, that's fine. So, yeah, that's okay. Right, let's uh, get the technology upgraded. How much are spare parts? And not actually too much here. Um, we are going to run this very, very close, aren't we? Yeah, we might even have to stop testing full stop come the end of the season. Which is fine. You know, I don't think the setup points do that much anyway. Um, the research points, you know, as, as good as they are, they're not the be all and end all right we're not going to buy any spare parts this grand prix we are just going to fix up the cars and leave it at that i am nervous especially because we've got um the japanese grand prix on the last day of the season and that's a flyaway race um okay right So for Belgium, definitely one speed, one on overtake and one on wind. That's fine. Apparently we can have two on wind. That's fine. Um, car assembly, same as normal. So let's get into the race. Very nerve-wracking. Right, uh, 22 degrees overcast for race uh, or qualifying today. Let's see how we get on. Can we get another pole? Ooh, second. And once again, very, very close, particularly between the top three there uh, of Panas Barrichello and Tuero. Hacking in a little bit off, but still well ahead of Magnussen in fifth there. Uh, very interesting. 24 degrees and overcast for the race day today. Uh, Barrichello... Of course, uh, you know, nearly two race wins ahead of Panis in the championship. He is who we've got to prioritise between now and then. So he's going to come in nice and early. He's going to have fresh boots uh, for both stints. We're going to try and uh, come in a little bit earlier with Hakkinen to help in his battle with... Um, Panis for second in the championship and let's see how we get on it's another top three finish and it is another victory and it's Mika Hakkinen this time and Barrichello out of the Grand Prix what happened to him he had an engine failure well 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 uh, we said he could afford a DNF hopefully that is his DNF uh, out of the way now so Hakkinen wins the Grand Prix, uh, 125.57-1 there. Uh, Tuero in second there, Panis third, Saras in fourth, Schumacher fifth, and Pedro Diniz rounds out the top six. Uh, Barrichello still leads by 13 points. Hakkinen back into the championship, you would say, 17 points behind. Uh, and we are still 18 points ahead in the Constructors' standings. Okay. Um, we did make a loss at the last Grand Prix, but that 
figure didn't change a lot, which is is good. Um, cut all unnecessary spending. Uh, we have a new star mechanic. That's fine. Um, yeah. Okay. So we have got the fixed deal with Patronus. Um, yeah, licensing. Oh, we've made good progress in our licensing deal for cars. Perfect. Perfect. That might be our saviour this season. Who knows? Right, let's look at the deals. Um, okay, or oh, the news, sorry. Faster slap was Tuero in the Grand Prix. Okie dokie. Um, yeah, it is, it, it's going to be so tight. Uh, but Patronus now all sorted out. So all of our deals are, are guaranteed for next season. Which is perfect. Therefore, we can stop this nonsense of hospitality. Um, and we can focus all of our resources on this. Um... Right, so we'll add another five percent to that, another five percent of that, because there is demand for the video games, so perhaps we go thirty percent there and forty percent there. And just try our luck. Try our luck with it. Right, back to life and back to reality. Um, what was a suspension I think was the other one wasn't it so let's increase the performance of that of course we are going to have our upgrade for this Grand Prix and this is our final upgrade of the season um, so yeah we do need to upgrade that we do need to upgrade that everything else we're leaving well alone in fact, I'm not, well, we're not going to do any research testing. I'm going to basically put 70% of our mechanics on setup testing and basically do the minimum we can. Yeah, 20 laps of testing. I mean, let's see if that actually does anything. It does. We got a full setup bar there from that. So, yeah. And only spend 15 grand on text testing. So that's perfect. Right, we are going to need some spare parts. This could take us into the red here. Um. Oh... It might be time. To swap around our cars a little bit. There we go. Oh, we got 124 grand. I am hoping that that is going to be enough to get us through this uh, next Grand Prix. I mean, no no hospitality and very little testing. That's surely got to help. Right. So, this could be our last Grand Prix of having... Um, having testing behind us, so having set up points. Right, let's head to the Grand Prix and hope for the best here. Um, yeah, the cars look good. Let's see how we get on in qualifying. Oh, it's going to be pole position. Awesome.
pole position for Mika Hakkinen, and he is starting to come right back at us uh, in this World Championship. This is our final upgrade of the season, so we should have a, a quicker car in theory. Uh, Barrichello uh, is in fifth position uh, for the start of this Grand Prix. Panis qualifies second, Tuero third, Irvine in fourth, but that's uh, a big margin now for, for Hakkinen to have made. Uh, 22 degrees and overcast for the race day today. Let's get them out there on the one stop heads. So Barrichello um, will be coming in second this time. Uh, oh, well, uh, I've messed it up, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. Um, we'll just go one lap later with... with Hakkinen, so let's see how we get on. Hey, one and two, and Mega Hakkinen wins the Grand Prix ahead of Rubens Barrichello in second. Perfect result for us, really. Tuero finishes third, Magnus in fourth, Saracen in fifth, and uh, Jason Watt rounds out the top six. Uh, out of the race in this one, Damon Hale driver error. Michael Schumacher uh, was first out of the Grand Prix. Olivia Panis, an unknown error for him. We are now one and two in the driver's standings. Uh, Barrichello, 13 points ahead of his teammate, Mika Hakkinen, it's going to be a battle towards the end of the year, but it looks like one of our drivers are going to win it. Uh, in the Constructors, 149 points. Uh, uh, Ferrari's 119. We made a profit. Woo! That was lucky. That was lucky. We've got two races to go um, this season. So, uh, I mean, it would probably be in our interest that uh, Barrichello wins it. I think his... Um, his championship bonus is slightly less uh, than Mick has so yeah um, we are ready to upgrade our car uh, spare shortage we have got an improved engine, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we have got TV advantage, not really bothered. Um, and we've got a race one as well. Um, so publishing's been poor. Oh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, is it? Okay, uh, how's our funding for next year looking? That, that's what I want to know. So this one, yeah. So we're looking at thirty point seven five million next year. I don't know what the difference is compared to this year, but that's surely got to be a good thing. Um. Okay. Right, we're fine. Um, we're not actually going to test this Grand Prix. No, we are. 40 grand, neither here nor there. It's not going to make a massive difference towards us. Um, right, Technology-wise, let's get that upgraded. And we get one final upgrade of the season in. And the reliability for the suspension, which is perfect. We'll get 100% of our guys working on that. Um, yeah, we can afford a couple of spare parts. It's crazy how we've had to go back to this scrimping and saving <laughs> towards the end of the season. It's fun though, it makes it a little bit different, um, which I'm actually all for. That's fine. So we've got our setup uh, points, which is exactly what we needed. Uh, maintenance wise uh, the problem is car one's got damage as well so um, yeah let's just get these fixed up 
and that'll be fine. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Right, uh, into the commercial world. And yeah, you can see, I'm just not making any progress in any of those deals, which is a, a real pity. Um, it's just the demand changes all the time. It's so ridiculous. But, uh, you know, we are making a little bit of money from it. Perhaps we could have put a little bit more people on it earlier, but earlier this season, but um, yeah, that's not the way it goes, I suppose. Um, yeah. Okay then. Okay. Right. Into the next Grand Prix we go. Could be our last one in profit for a little while. Actually, going to add a little bit of rain to Hankman's car. I'm fancying a little bit of rain. We haven't had a bit for a long time. But uh, here we go into the Grand Prix then. So, uh, 19 degrees, very dry for the race. Let's see how we get on in qualifying. Ooh, it's another pole position coming up. And who is it? It's Rubens Barrichello this time. Uh, Rubens Barrichello is uh, 1 minute 18, 7 to 6. Uh, Hakkinen there in fourth place, um, 3 tenths of a second behind. Twero, very, very close. Uh, Irvine for Williams has stepped up recently, so Williams have had a, a successful upgrade um, package come in to place. Um, oh, heavy rain for the race. I had a feeling that that might happen. Uh, this could throw the race absolutely wide open. We are still going to go with our one-stop strategy for both of our wonderful drivers. Um, 34 for Rubens Barrichello. Um, although, you know what? I'm going to take a risk with Hakkinen. And we're going to go for a two-stop strategy on the wet tyres. Let's see how it goes. Have we won the race? 1-2. That is what we're talking about. And Hakkinen's two-stop strategy worked an absolute treat. Hakkinen wins the race... Uh, by over 30 seconds, 32 seconds ahead of his teammate Rubens Barrichello. Uh, Tuero finishes third for Ferrari. Schumacher fourth. A Hill in a wonderful fifth for McLaren. Good to see him in the points again. And Irvine in sixth for Williams. Uh, that means that Barrichello now nine points ahead of Hakkinen in the championship. Uh, Panis there in third. Tuero in fourth. So he hasn't guaranteed the championship victory. Um, uh, all he needs to do is is get a point at the next Grand Prix and he will win the championship. Um, we have very much won the Constructors, so a huge cost for the next Grand Prix. So I do think we're, we're not going to test. Um, unless you cut back or raise some money right now, we are in big trouble. Um, yes, I would agree. <laughs> um yeah, so perhaps I sell some shares to get us through. Um, you have an unused advantage. That's fine. We made good progress for the um, the other three deals, which is good. Our efforts have been wasted. What a shame. What a shame. Um, anyway, news. Hagenin's, uh well, Hagenin's won three races in a row now. Maybe Barrichello isn't um, actually going to win on countback. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Barrichello led the grid, spinning in the rain. Ice rink. Um, 
okay. Okay, let's have a little look at uh, how things are shaping up next season. So no change for engines, no change for fuel, and we're actually getting a tyre upgrade for next season. Which is nice. Um, it's got slightly worse, that, which is not good. Um, we are going to save this because it is struggling a little bit. Licensing, how are we getting on? I mean, yeah, two bars, it's just never going to happen, is it? So we might as well keep them working, though. Um, but, yeah, we're not going to test at this Grand Prix. We're not going to do that. Um, because it's going to be between our drivers anyway. We've, we've definitely won the driver's title. Um, we do get some free testing, though. So we might as well try the, the free testing. Well, there you go. I mean, we that shows that free practice is uh, is very very good. Um, yeah, that's sorted out. We don't need to do anything else with that. Um, how many spare parts do we need then? Let's have a little gander. Um, just the two, two spare parts. Oh my word. Um, right, we're going to have to sell some shares, aren't we? I didn't want to have to do this, but uh, we are going to have to. Sell 6%. So that's another 1.5 million in the bank now. And uh, worst worst case scenario, we have to get a loan for the start of next season. Okay. Right. Final race of the season, then. Who is going to win the driver's title? Mika Hakkinen has to win if he's going to do it. going to be a big moment for us and is this going to be our final Grand Prix of the series let's find out so uh, let's see how we get on in Japan then um, light rain for qualifying that's got to play into the hands of Rubens Barrichello let's see it is going to be pole position for one of our drivers. Who's it going to be? It is Rubens Barrichello. So the championship leader over a second ahead of Esteban Tuero there in second. Uh, Hakkinen there in third. Did we actually um, fix our cars up? I, I'm, I'm not sure we did. <laughs> Heavy rain for the race. No, we didn't. Oh, I am so stupid. But anyway, heavy rain for the race. Um, that has got to play into Barrichello's hands. But it could mean that there is uh, potential for something to happen. We are going to go for the two-stop strategy. It seemed a, a much quicker strategy um, in the last race. So here we go. Good luck to both of them. Who's going to come out on top? Well, it's a one-two. And Barrichello has won the Drivers World Championship. He's won the Japanese Grand Prix. Mika Hakkinen finishes second, 10 seconds behind, uh, sorry, 20 seconds behind him. So Barrichello was in a league of his own in the end there. Tuero finishes third, Schumacher fourth, Panis fifth, and Damon Hill rounds out a good end of the season in sixth place. Denise 
finishes seventh uh, for Benetton. But uh, what a season it has been for Rubens Barrichello. And he wins the Drivers' Championship 13 points ahead of Mika Hakkinen in second. Tuero manages to beat his teammate Paris for third. Um, Saracen finishes fifth. Irvine in sixth for the Williams cars. Uh, Schumacher in seventh for Benetton. Uh, Magnussen eighth. What ninth? And Damon Hill rounds out the top ten. Uh, in the constructors, we absolutely dominate it. Uh, that is what I expected with this driver lineup to absolutely walk both championships. And Barrichello has held his own against his more experienced, arguably quicker teammate in Mika Hakkinen. Barrichello has come out on top and won his first driver's championship. Right, let's see where we are here. Wow, minus two million. Ooh. 2004 Constructors Champions uh, Sauber 2004 Drivers Champion Rubens Barrichello uh, Warning you have spent more than you can afford and are now in debt The bank has charged you 10000 for your unauthorised borrowing uh, It will be game over if we end the next round in debt So uh, that is something to bear in mind I, I do believe that we will manage to get up to the Australian Grand Prix and uh, find out what happens there. Um, but there you go. We've won our first ever World Constructors title. Uh, no, that's our second. It's our second Constructors Championship. I don't know what that's on about. Um, it's our first ever Drivers Championship. But there you go. He's won his first ever World title. Very, very good. And we got Manager of the Year. which is good um yeah okay fair enough right uh bad news this year we lost 10 million our sponsors are delighted with your personal high profile our team won <laughs> break out the champagne all of that Um, anything else in there? Um, yeah. Well, we did make good progress on the cars. Um, Right. Uh, anyway. We need to push on into next season and see if the team survives. An excellent result for Sabre. Your hard work has paid off. Your goal for next year is to make it two in a row. Well done. I thought that was going to be game over. <laughs> You've taken a higher place in the, in the Hall of Fame, which is good. Next season... Right, so we start with negative 2.1 million. <laughs> uh, let's just check the licensing. No, all of that was wasted. How's our shares looking? How's the share price? 210. Well, 9% of our team would take us to 51 how much would that get us away? Nah. Well, I think the time has come. We can borrow up to 78 and a half million. Now, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen um, <laughs> of whether, uh, you know, if I borrow 78 and a half million over 48 races <laughs> yeah, you know we'll I suppose we'll be fine because we should in theory manage to to keep the money going until the last season in the last race because 48 races away will be the season finale we've got three seasons left 
because a, a small loan's not really going to help, is it? It's just we might as well just go for the maximum. You know what? I'm going to do it. This series is about taking risks now. We've achieved what we wanted to. We got a drivers and constructors championship um, double. You know, you can see how much we are going to be paying back. Uh, we're going to be paying about back about a hundred million um, at the end of the 48th race but this will just give us unlimited spending power until the end of the series and you know that's what it's about it's about survival now um you know we need to get that money in the bank you know we've never spent more than 10 million in a season so in theory this should work out for us Um, let's see. Let's see what happens here. It's actually not going to be as much as you think. It's going to be around about 90 million that we're going to pay back. Just over. So it's not quite hit the 100 million mark. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right. Repayments will start after the next race. You cannot make excess repayments to reduce interest. Do you wish to proceed? Yes, we do. So we are going to be paying two million back per race. Two two times forty eight is ninety six. So, um, yeah. Hopefully that will be enough to keep us going. <laughs> oh dear. Right, well, could we... What would happen if I put 24 million of that on the investments? What would we actually get back? So we only get 20% on that. So... If we put 24 million down straight away, we'd get only 28 million back. That's not worth it. Um. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I think I've probably made the biggest mistake I, I possibly could have. Um. But we'll have the, the pre-season ramble at the start of uh, next episode. Damon Hill will be retiring. It's a shame to see. I think a lot of that is probably down to uh, the performance of his car last season. And, yeah, he's he's going to be retiring at the end of the year, which is a, a huge shame for, for the sport because uh, Damon Hill has been an absolute... Uh, rock throughout this series he's won three world championships uh, Mika Hakkinen's won one Coulthard's won one, Schumacher's won one and now Barrichello has won one uh, and that was the second most dominant season of the lot from Rubens, uh, David Coulthard's first season was the, the year he absolutely dominated and, and we had John Alacy of course uh, but we'll do all of that uh, towards the end of the season and when we reminisce on our uh, series but i've either made the world's most genius plan of well 76 million pounds is um you know our budget now and we've got 48 races of the series left uh it, as long as we make enough money at just about uh pay back our, our repayments every month then we should be all right what can go wrong? What can go wrong? We, we've done everything we wanted to now, so it's all about having fun. And um, we might even try and sign Michael Schumacher or something ridiculous like that for, for the final season. But, uh, yeah, uh, that is where we're going to leave it for today. If you have enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe for plenty more uh, Grand Prix World videos. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.